Thank you for joining us for another information video from SmartIrrigation.com. My name is Chris Okersee, and as you can see, we're getting into the fall time. Temperatures are starting to drop. It's getting a bit chilly outside. So we thought we'd tell you how to protect your underground sprinkler system from below freezing temperatures. In this video, we're going to tell you how to protect your above ground system components from freezing. And if you're in a region where the ground freezes, you will also have to get a blowout. We will touch on that in another video. In the meantime, these procedures will protect your system from freezing before the blowout is done. In this video, we're going to go over how to turn off your underground sprinkler water supply. And we're going to show you how to winterize three different configurations of underground sprinkler systems. The first step in winterizing your underground sprinkler system is to turn off the water to the system. In this case, we have an inside shutoff valve. And on is parallel to the line. To the line. If you want to turn it off, you have to turn it to a right angle position to the pipe, and that turns it off. There's two other kinds of shutoffs, and we'll touch on. This one here is a winterizing tap. The system could be hooked to something like this. So the reason why these will work is they don't leave any water outside to freeze. The water gets shut off way back into the, in the building because that's where the shut off is right there. Hopefully you don't have exactly this kind because this has a vacuum breaker and these aren't rated for constant pressure so it's not a good idea to hook an underground sprinkler system up to something with a vacuum breaker and especially an automatic one that requires constant pressure uh, to the line always. And then the final kind is one that would be in a warmer climate region you would have a shutoff inside a valve box. Um, so that's generally just where the ground doesn't freeze. And another step that is important is to make sure you turn off your underground sprinkler timer if you have one. So you turn it to the off position from auto to off. And uh, the reason why we do this is because if you leave it on the on position, it'll try to run the valves dry and that could burn them up in the winter time. It's not good for the valves to be running dry. This system here is one of the safest out there because it has the ground uh, protecting the valve. The valve is in an in-ground valve box, so there's nothing we need to do here as long as the ground doesn't freeze. Now, if you're in a location where the ground freezes, this will have to be uh, blown out before the ground freezes. But for now, just keep the lid on tight, and a quick frost in the evening will not damage it. But you do want to make sure there's no pressure in the manifold here, which feeds the valves. So we open up the tap and we let the water run out to let the pressure out. If this continues to drip for like 24 to 48 hours after you've opened it up, there might be a problem with your shutoff valve inside. It might be leaking. So you'll probably have to have a plumber check and replace the interior shutoff valve if it doesn't stop dripping. In this system's case, uh, the backflow prevention is inside, so it's safe from freezing. But if your backflow preventer is outside, it will need to be winterized as well. Um, what we would do is uh, they all have small valves on them as well. So they have to be left in the half open position. And these small test cocks here are small little ball valves. A quarter turn will open them halfway. And then you have to uh, check the manufacturer's instructions for additional winterization of the backflow device. What we have here are some valves that are on the wall. So they're more vulnerable from freezing than valves that are in the ground that are being protected by the warmth of the earth. So we want to protect these from a quick freeze in the evening if temperatures are getting that low, below freezing. So what we do is we open up the valve here to let some air, the tap, let some air into the system. And these have bleeder knobs that allow us to drain the valves. So we open these up counterclockwise, loosen them, bleeder knobs. And that will allow water to escape from the valve. 
so there'll be no pressure if anything in there freezes and it won't allow it to crack. And if you don't have a bleeder knob on your valve, the alternative method is actually to cover them up with an insulating device to save it from a quick freeze overnight. So what we have here is just a towel. So you put a couple of towels over here, just like you're covering your vegetables in the evening. And that'll help them from uh, getting through the evening from the quick freeze. And uh, you could also, if it's going to rain or snow, you can cover it with some plastic as well. We have a manifold here that has some brass ball valves, and they're vulnerable to a quick freeze below freezing temperatures in the evening. So what we want to do is we want to protect this system. To do that, you want to release the water from inside the manifold. So you open up the tap. And these ball valves, they can crack if they have water trapped inside. So to take the water out of the ball valves, you just really open them up halfway. Not fully, because you can still have water trapped behind the ball. So halfway will drain them completely and protect them from your quick freeze in the evening. Congratulations. If you follow the procedures in our video, you have now winterized your above ground irrigation components. But if you live in a region where the ground freezes, you will have to get the system blown out. That we will touch on in one of our next videos, but it will look something like this. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And remember to hit like and subscribe. And check out our website at smartirrigation.com.